And with me uh, right now here in the studio is defense and government analyst for our arts daily newspaper, Amir Oren. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. And also Iranian politics analyst, Mayor Javed Ansar. Good evening. Good evening, Lucy. Before I will uh, continue with you, I just uh, want to give another note that uh, Iran's Revolutionary Guards are also said to benefit from the Iran nuclear deal. Dozens of uh, companies linked to the powerful military force will win sanctions relief under, uh, relief under the deal. The IRGC could act like uh, a gate gatekeeper for Western firms are trying to break into Iran's economy. One such arm is uh, Khatim Il Anbiya, controlling 812 affiliated companies and deemed by Washington as uh, pro proliferators uh, of weapons of mass destruction. And to understand what is happening uh, right now here, uh, I will start with you, Mayor. This um, that was obvious that uh, one will benefit, some groups will also, maybe dangerous groups, will also benefit from yes. the relief of sanctions. Yes, I think this was done for the, for the buy-in. If, if you want the, the Revolutionary Guard to back the deal, and uh, you know you need to remove some of these sanctions as ca kind of compensation. Uh, Khatam al Anbiya is a giant, I mean, comparing to some other uh, Iranian organizations and companies in terms of infrastructure, building dams, building uh, pipelines, they're an absolute co huge conglomerate. And uh, I think this was their way of, you know, trying to make them more malleable and not to object to some of the very, uh, some of the compromises that Ayatollah Khamenei made. Let's not forget that the deal itself, three cross red lines by Khamenei have been crossed in this. So this is kind of like to get their buy-in uh, for the deal. You must give incentives to every stakeholder in the deal, in the States, in uh, Iran, around the world, Everyone must benefit somehow. It's not, you know, it's not pleasant, but it has to be done. Not only that, everyone, it's like everybody right now is saying, "Oh, you see, Iran is already uh, taking, um, showing its real face. Iran was never, but Iran was never actually innocent. Iran was never." Um, hiding its, its, its intentions. So how, what? No, Again, not, we're not on the nuclear front. You're right about all the other because fronts, but this was not part of the deal. It was obvious that this deal has to do with the nuclear weapon program. That's it. All the other stuff, uh, there is the United Nations, there is uh, interstate uh, commerce, um, business as usual, or business back to usual, but uh, and nobody ever expected Iran to turn into Andorra. Before I will ask you uh, when the people of Iran are going to start benefiting from uh, actually the relief of the sanctions, uh, some opposition to Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, you released today an article saying that some really high-ranked officials are saying that this deal is actually good, but they're afraid to say it out loud because what? You know the, the old uh, Sherlock Holmes deal about the dog that didn't bark? You always hear intelligence chiefs in Israel, Mossad, military intelligence, others, speak out about the issues of the day, they warn, they analyze, they assess publicly too, or they go to the Knesset Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee, Maybe and lo and behold, behold lo and behold, for the last month, there was uh, an earth-shattering event, the July 14th deal in Vienna, and you don't hear one squawk out of the intelligence people. Why? Do they all think exactly like Benjamin Netanyahu? Um, is this uh, some coincidence that all of a sudden all of these free-thinking professionals um, have clammed up? No. This is because Netanyahu doesn't want any crack in the wall when he approaches Congress. He wants Washington to believe but Falsely. this crack already started just two weeks ago when a lot of uh, army uh, officials and ar uh, military men that signed not, a petition. Not in, no, this, this is not enough because retired military, retired security chiefs uh, have also supported Netanyahu's opponents in the elections and he can always say, well, they are not privy to the secret material which I see. It's very uh, uh, good for them to have been many years ago in position. Now. Mm -hmm. I know all the secrets, yes, but also the intelligent chiefs know all the, of the secrets, and one of the secrets they know is that Netanyahu himself has become a problem. And when they have to assess 
the impact of the Netanyahu versus Obama war, which is what is taking place. On Israel's position, they have to boldly come out and say, this is bad for the country. Yeah, but they, they are not saying it, that this is bad for the country, and they are on the way risking the relationship between Israel and the United States, and maybe Israel and the entire international community. Yes, because, because there are three different issues here. One is the Iran deal. Okay. Is it good, bad, acceptable? On balance, they think, in intelligence, that it's okay. Of course, they would have liked to improve it. They know that Iran wasn't going to capitulate. So on balance, if they have to vote, yes or no, yes. The other thing is the U.S.-Israeli relationship, which is the cornerstone of Israel's strategic position. Of course, they think that it's very bad what is happening. And the third part is that the United States has been offering Israel unprecedented exposure to raw materials of the collection assets that only the United States has in space. Just in, be, on the air. like, relaxed. Just Yes. You, you, you may tie in into our intelligence uh, uh, blood circulation and get it and find for yourself. And Netanyahu ordered the intelligence community to say no. How would the Iranians? Uh, okay, you are surprised. You are like, you know, because you're we, angry. No, because <laughs> when Yitzhak Shamir, when we're being fired uh, from Saddam Hussein, even Yitzhak Shamir, who was one of the chief Likud people, he accepted not yeah. to fire and to get, because the, the relationship with the United States was so important. It, the Iran issue is important, but the fact that the prime minister is only hurting our relationship with the United States over this, I think this is something that f for us to worry about as citizens mm -hmm. of Israel. And of course, as Amir's recent article shows, there are parts of the Israeli intelligence community who don't share the prime minister's view. If and the American Jewish community, too, which is also going to be hurt by this dual loyalty charge. Uh, I started asking you about uh, when the relief of the sanctions, the people of Iran will start benefiting from it, and not only the officials, not only the government. I think a lot of the people in Iran are not, uh, they're not, they're not, they don't think it's going to come to them immediately. I think people, are, people have, re this is why the Tehran stock exchange has actually been going down oh, after yeah. the deal. It went up, then it went down. The price of gold has been going up because people are becoming nervous, yes. or, the, or the real has not been doing so well. People are aware that sanctions is one of the problems. The much bigger problem in Iran is the cancer of corruption. And, and the incredible monopoly power with some of the some of the state economic uh, corporations have, so they're not being very optimistic. Good. So nobody's optimistic. Welcome to the Middle East. Still have more than a month until the vote in Congress. Many surprises to come. Many surprises to come. Whoa. Okay. Two minutes, and not a surprise. The second part of the news today is here. So two minutes, and I'll be back.